You know all those lonely donated lampshades pick up a matching pair. Pick up a thrifted belt. Run a bead of clear glue around the perimeter. Take the other lampshade. Place it on top of the other lampshade. Take some jute twine and tie the inner hardware of the two lamps together. Give the connected shades a little shake to make sure they are securely connected. Take the belt and buckle it around the skinny center of the two lampshades. Add a little glue to the loose end of the belt and secure it to the rest of the belt. Find a thin wood circle disc. Paint the edge with some acrylic paint. And peel and stick wallpaper is perfect for this project. Place the wallpaper disc on the lampshade base to create a brand new accent table. Found a filing cabinet on the side of the road for free. I washed it down so to remove all the dirt, oil, debris, and dust. Next, I removed all the hardware. We bought two stair bolsters. We started by measuring them against the filing cabinet. After marking them, we cut them with our saw. My husband pre-drilled the holes in the board and then pre-drilled the center hole. And he used the drill to place the screw through the board to secure the legs into place. We used some putty to cover the screws on the top. We smoothed it out and let it dry overnight. I used my sander to sand down the putty to make it level. After the sanding was done, I wiped down the board with a damp cloth Painted the filing cabinet with Dixie Bell slick stick. I painted the board with Dixie Bell driftwood paint and let everything dry overnight. I wanted more of a driftwood look. To achieve this look, you start by dry brushing on the white glaze and then wiping with a paper towel as you go. After that dries, you do the same with the brown glaze. I painted the filing cabinet Dixie Bell blue paint. With the hardware that was removed from the filing cabinet, I painted it with a Dixie Bell metallic silver base and top coat. The great thing about this desk is that you can make it right-handed or you can make it left-handed. I'm loving my new DIY table. To start this project, I want to remove everything but the main section of this lamp. I'm going to add the glue to each of the joints and then leave it all to dry. I found these signs at the dollar store. I'm going to add a thinner wood round. A little wood glue will hold this into place perfectly. I'm going to find the middle and use the top of the lamp to trace a little circle. I'm ready to paint. I'm going to use the white chalky paint to cover both the base of the lamp and the wood. I want to attach the wood top to the lamp. The circle that I drew before is going to help me so that the lamp is correctly centered. Add some glue and then I can join them together and it'll be nice and solid. How cute is this little table? It's such a handy little thing to have. I'm going to rip down all the fabric off of my lampshade. So I'm going to take it outside and give it a quick spray paint. And then after that, I decided I needed to spray paint one more thing. And that was a mason jar sealing part of the lid that I'm going to use later on. I'm going to take this wood slice. I'm going to give this a good coat of sealer. I'm also going to do like the live edges. And once that's all sealed, it's going to be time to grab that mason jar lid and drill a tiny hole in the middle. And now it's time to assemble. I have some E6000 industrial glue that I'm putting in a little hole where like a finial for a lamp would go. And that's where I'm going to kind of adhere that a mason jar sealer. I'm going to put some more E6000 glue along the rim here. So I'll go ahead and set that down. Got it in place. And now it's time to drill. It's all good. Going to flip it up, give you a look at it. Thinking if you had a bigger lampshade, this really would make a precious side table. I mean, the possibilities are endless of all the things you could use. The next time you are at a thrift store, pick up some inexpensive wicker baskets. Dip the paintbrush in the paint and then pounce. Take the brush and lightly brush the paint onto the basket in the main direction of the basket weave. This basket finish looks fantastic, styled with flowers or green plants. Take a wicker basket with a very light finish. Spray paint the basket in light layers with an oil rubbed bronze color. Let the basket dry completely. Paint in light layers. You will notice that the paint dries very fast between layers because there is actually very little paint used. I hope this inspired you to give inexpensive wicker baskets an updated look with paint. So first thing you need to do is find some frames that you like and you're going to take the glass out. We're going to spray the white vinegar on one side. Grab this really cool stuff by Rust-Oleum and go over top. By using your paper towel and dabbing, it's going to create a design. Spray an even coat of the black paint. We're going to put our glass back into the frames. How beautiful is that? It looks like you bought it from an antique store. We're going to head down to Habitat for Humanity. We're going to save this shutter from a drizzly day. Just sand all the edges. So just use some spackle, cover all the holes. I grabbed some gray primer and just started painting. It's always better to do two or three light coats. And on the top, we went to the very middle 
and we're gonna put some hooks. Next, I need to have a whiteboard. I grabbed a little bit of extra epoxy glue that I had laying around, and then I lay it out right underneath where the whiteboard's gonna go. Next, I grabbed this little home sweet home bucket that I got, grabbed a pliers, bent the hook, and a little extra of the epoxy that I had, and put it right on the back. That is just gonna go ahead and clamp it right there with a clothespin and hold it on. While that's drying, I wanna get some twine, so just go ahead and put a knot in it. I'm gonna put it through a small clothespin that I picked up at the Dollar Tree. Then I'm gonna go ahead and just clip it right onto the shutters. Next, we gotta hang the shutter itself, and just look at this amazing project. I can hang my keys, leave notes, and it's got everything I need. First, we're gonna spray paint. I'm using Rust-Oleum Satin Heirloom White and Rust-Oleum Stone. We're gonna take some painter's tape, you kind of want to rough tear one edge of it. We're going to put this along the bottom. I'm using a craft paint and I'm just using brushed gold. You kind of want to make it look like the, the paint is kind of tearing and you can see underneath it. All right, so here's the finished product and I absolutely love how they turned out. So I'm going to begin by pushing my air dry clay into the silicone mold and then evening it out with a rolling pin. Once it's all even, I'm just going to very carefully peel it back, take my exacto knife and cut off any messy edges and I'm going to just go ahead and lay my clay over top of the frame cutting off the excess. Then I'm going to go ahead and make some more of the frame designs using the different patterns in the silicone mold. Once I've done them all and let them dry overnight I'm going to come in with some E6000 glue. Once the pieces are dried on the frames I'm going to go ahead and paint them with this DecoArt metallic gold paint. I'm going to be using this green color here just to give this frame a little depth and dimension. Then I'm going to come in with the shade Worn Penny and I'm going to brush this over top as well. And while these aren't real antique frames, I can take pride in knowing that I made something special with thrifted frames that would otherwise go in a landfill. The first step is just to make sure this is really clean. To start with, I want to use some gold leaf adhesive. I am just going to let this sit for about 20 minutes. Now we're going to get out the gold leaf sheets. Now you want to use a tweezer and a dry paintbrush with this. As I'm going along, I'm going to use the paintbrush and it's going to pull away any of the excess. And then we're ready to move on to the next step. Now we're going to add some paint, but we're going to paint the inside of this vase. And it has the look of a white ceramic vase with a beautiful antiqued kind of rustic gold finish at the top. To get the table ready, I'm going to start by giving it a quick clean. Next, I want to give it a light sanding. I want to wipe it again. I like to start with the pedestal first and then do the top. I'm going to add and combine some water with some white paint. To apply the wash, I'm going to use this chip brush because the bristles are natural and uneven. To soften up those lines a little bit, I can wipe them with just a damp paper towel. I absolutely love how pretty this table is now and how much the lighter color changes its look. 